A number of years ago now, quite a few years ago now, um, the University of Illinois in the United States, they, they, they did a research project where they had 20 pilots as guinea pigs. These 20 pilots were VFR only pilots. They put these pilots in a, in a flight simulator and they had the flight simulator flying in cloud or simulated cloud conditions. And they said to each of these 20 guinea pig pilots, just try and keep the aircraft straight and level for me. It took anywhere from 480 seconds to only 20 seconds for these pilots to lose control of that aircraft and enter an in-flight loss of control situation. But the average amount of time it took was 178 seconds. So I thought it worthwhile tonight to play this video. It's an oldie but a goodie, but it certainly drives home a good message. The sky is overcast and the visibility poor. That reported eight kilometer visibility looks more like three and you can't judge the height of the cloud. Your altimeter says you're at 1,500 feet, but your map tells you there's local terrain as high as 1,200 feet. There might even be a tower nearby because you're not sure just how far off course you are. But you've flown into worse weather than this, so you press on. You find yourself unconsciously easing back just a bit on the controls to clear those non too imaginary towers. With no warning, you're in the soup. You peer so hard into the milky white mist that your eyes hurt. You fight the feeling in your stomach. You swallow, only to find your mouth dry. Now you realize you should have waited for better weather. The meeting was important but not that important. Somewhere a voice is saying, you should have turned back. You now have 178 seconds to live. Your aircraft feels on an even keel, but your compass turns slowly. You push your rudder pedal and add pressure to the controls to stop the turn, but this feels unnatural, so you quickly return the controls to their original position. That feels better, but now your compass is turning a little faster and your airspeed is increasing slightly. You scan your instrument panel for help, but you don't find any. It all looks unfamiliar. You're sure this is just a bad spot. You'll break out in a few minutes, but you don't have a few minutes. You now have 100 seconds to live. You glance at your altimeter and are shocked to see it unwinding. You're already down to 1,200 feet. Instinctively, you pull back on the controls, but the altimeter still unwinds. The engine is into the red, and the airspeed's almost there too. You have 45 seconds to live. Now you're sweating and shaking. There must be something wrong with the controls. Pulling back only moves that airspeed indicator deep into the red. You can hear the wind tearing at the aircraft. You have 10 seconds to live. Suddenly, you see the ground. The trees rush up at you. You can see the horizon if you turn your head far enough, but it's at an unusual angle. You're almost inverted. You open your mouth to scream, Unfortunately, we're still losing pilots to this type of thing, not only in the top end and in the northern parts of Australia, but also in the southern parts of Australia. They're not, they're not just raw statistics, they're real people. And it's, you know, it's a tragedy. So sometimes you feel like we have to keep, you know, repainting the Sydney Harbour Bridge and going back and revisiting this stuff. But I think it's an important message that um, a night like tonight, I think it's, it's an important take-home message. VFR flight into cloud is, um, is uh, not, a, not a good thing. In-flight loss of control, if you're going to have an accident, in-flight loss of control is not the type of accident to have.